so I ended the previous video saying that was it for the chapter, but of course we have an important uh, subsection left and that's the stock market. So one more video before we conclude the chapter. And so let us talk about what exactly the stock market is. Okay, so so far we have talked about bonds. Bonds are usually, but necessarily, but usually issued by the government to raise funds. So some of you may have been hearing uh, in the news that the cost, the interest you can earn from uh, national saving certificates have gone down. Uh, most of you may know them as Shonchai Patro. Many of you may have relatives who own Shonchai Patros. So what is this? This is effectively uh, what you can do is suppose you have some money, you use that money to buy this by uh, NSC from the government. And as a result, they are going to give you a guaranteed payments. So if you buy a three months, uh, three monthly payment, uh, what that means is that the government is going to pay you a guaranteed payment every three months. So I think it's the rates are around 11.25% per annum but of course it's paid every three months so this divided by th uh, four whatever you get and that's the rate at which you will be paid interest rate uh, every three months and there are other schemes as well uh, this isn't necessarily a bond but they follow a similar structure is that you pay the you you buy a bond with a certain amount of money and with that you get guaranteed payment every month every three months every year a certain amount of money will be paid to you uh, this is of course not how companies uh, do it so how does companies or firms raise money when they need to you know suppose they want to uh, open up a new factory and they need to raise money uh, to open that factory. How will they finance that? They can do that in four ways, okay? So the first one is, of course, internal finance. So a well-run company will never spend all the money that it makes in profit. Some of its money will be put back into the company and kept as a reserve. And when they need it, they will use that fund. So internally, the farm may use its own money or it may use external finance. That's when it takes a loan from a bank, let's say, or other financial institutions. Third is, of course, what we have already talked about, debt financing. So this is through loans and bonds, etc. Talked about this. And of course, the fourth is something called equity financing. In short, basically stock. So what is equity financing? This is when uh, uh, the company share sells the company sells part of its profits. So what does that mean? So what happens when you buy a stock from a company? Uh, there is no such thing as guaranteed payments, right? With stocks, how much you earn, uh, with stocks, let me write that down as well. The earnings that you make through stocks is called dividends. And there is no guarantee that uh, how much dividend you will make. Neither is there any guarantee about whether there will be dividends. I mean, firm may just decide not to pay dividends. 
So the way that works is dividends are tied to profit. So when a firm makes profit, they pay dividend. High profit means high dividend. No profit means no dividends. So you, if the company effectively sells a part of its profit to you, okay? And so this is the fourth way in which firms raise money is that when you're buying a stock, of course, you're paying the money, you're paying the money to the company. And so the company uses that money to undertake whatever expansion or whatever it is that they want it to do. So equity financing, is effectively what we are talking about when we're talking about stocks or the stock market. That brings us to the most important question is that how are stocks valued? We hear a lot about this, right? That the stock market is doing good, which means stock prices are high, stock markets is doing bad, stock markets have crashed. Uh, at the end of the day, how do we decide that how much each stock should be owed? So effectively, what that is, is that present value of all future dividends and price of stock. So when you buy stock of a company, you may plan to hold it for 20 years. Over this 20 year period, you'll be earning a certain amount of dividend, expect to earn a certain amount of dividend. And the way we value a stock is by calculating the present value of all these dividends that you hope to earn, expect to earn over a 20 year period. And then of course, the selling price of the stock as well. At the end of the 20 years, you'll be selling the stock. So we add these two together and that's the price of a stock, okay? So let's try and calculate this. Uh, let's come up with a formula for this. Uh, so suppose like D is dividend and let's use Q to denote price of stock. Okay, so if we are trying to calculate the price of uh, of a stock today, okay? Or rather, let's take a roundabout way. Uh, if you invest $1, how much do you expect to earn from a stock? So let's write this down. First of all, the dividend that you expect to earn next year uh, let's simplify and assume just two periods, not 10 or 20 periods, but two periods. So you're going to earn dividends next year. And then what you are going to do is you are going to sell the stock. So the expected price next year. We're going to divide this by the price that you paid today. And what does this give us? This gives us how much we can expect to earn from a $1 investment of the stock. Uh, what we can also write is this then of course will be equal to one plus the interest rate, uh, the one period interest rate that uh, we will be facing plus X. Uh, and I think I have already explained what X is. X is the risk premium. So as I've said already, like when we're talking about bonds, there is guaranteed payments. For stocks, there is no guaranteed payment. So there is a risk premium, okay? Now we're going to rearrange this. So if we rearrange and uh, we are going to get uh, QT, this QT is equal to uh, DT plus one E divided by one plus i uh, t plus x uh, plus what's left q t plus one expected value of course one plus i one t plus x 
And so here we have, this is price of the stock, which is equal to this PV of dividend, uh, expected dividend plus PV of selling price of stock. Okay. So effectively what the way I had defined it, how are stocks valued? Uh, we take the present value of all future dividends and the price of the stock, future price of the stock. Uh, since we are in two period, uh, we just have period T when you're buying the stock. And then in the next period, you're going to get dividend, this, and at the end of that period, you're going to sell the stock. And that is how we calculate price of a stock, okay? So this is important right here. This is how stocks are effectively valued. So what are the takeaways from this? Uh, number one, rise in expected future dividend. What will that do? Let's look at the, uh, the question right here. If this go up, this will go up. Uh, so rise in expected future dividend increases stock price, vice versa. If expectation goes down, price will go down. What's the second is uh, rise in expected future price of bond, uh, price of stock which is this price of stock will once again you increase current period current price of stock this is also vice versa and the third what else do we have interest rate uh, if interest rate were to go up current or future rise in interest rate current or future or i'll write expected rise in interest rate uh, lowers stock price once again vice versa and finally risk premium and this all should make intuitive sense to you guys right what happens if risk goes up of a stock price will go down you'll be less willing to buy it so rise in risk premium lowers stock price once again vice versa so these are the four implications of of this formula that we have derived and they should make intuitive sense okay of course we can take a look at the formula and from the formula figure out what will happen but they should also make intuitive sense you're trying to decide whether you want to buy stock or not and your expectation of how much dividend you will earn goes up then of course price will go up your expectation of what the price will be in the future goes up so of course you will want to buy the stock today you can make more money uh, if interest rate goes up you'll be less willing to invest your money in the stock market so when interest rate goes up uh, stock prices go down and then of course risk premium if risk goes up you're less willing to buy so stock prices goes down okay so we've sort of set up the scenario uh, in the next video it will be a relatively smaller video we're going to expand on the formula a little bit.